And in so many of these stories, let me back that picture up real quick. And so many of these stories, we're talking about not only broken families, but whenever people ask for custody of a child, they accept custody of a child. And then they abuse that privilege of being a caretaker of that child. I think it's the most horrendous thing you could do. It's completely voluntary. And I think that type of action makes you just as bad as if a biological parent did this because that's uncalled for. You could have just kept yourself out of the ring, out of the running for this child. So that's what we're going to talk about in this particular story. I think it comes out of Denver, if I'm not mistaken. But let me give you guys a disclaimer because I know I'm going to make some people upset, but some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. That is so much easier to just play that <laughs> rather than me trying to just repeat it all the time. But nonetheless, thank you to our channel members, our moderators, for those who support what we do. Like we continue to keep trying to bring awareness to prevent these situations. And like I said, I think a lot of people have seen these stories or if they've seen stories similar to this. There should be no reason that this baby ended up in this situation. And I'm going to tell you guys this. That this child was loved. He had a great teacher. And this is a young man that literally could have run, that could have changed the world. He could have run this country. He could have been anything. And he had a smile that even his teacher will admit that lights up a room. Okay. Now, in June, Denver police, and I'm getting this from 9news.com. So thank you for the article. Denver police responded to an apartment for a call about a child who was unresponsive. The child was eight-year-old Demetrius Wilson, and he died from his injuries. And since his death, News 9 has been looking into the circumstances. Some of what we do, some people would consider to be people like me and others to be investigative journalists, because sometimes we don't have the full story. We'll go out and do research. People like Illicit Deeds, a lot of us, We'll take our time, our personal time to find out what the real story is, get the real information to present more of a comprehensive presentation, right? Whenever you have news stations that do this, and especially this particular person, I will let you guys see his video that went as far as what he did to make sure and bring this story um, and, and give it as much light as possible. I really have to shout out this news station because they did such an amazing job, this man in particular. Not only is he a brother, but I want y'all to just hear his passion for this story. And I just think that if more people had just a fraction of what he brought to this, I think that'd be awesome. If we had teachers that cared just a fraction, like what this teacher did about this boy, man, I think our world would be such a better place. Even like my mother, my mother was a teacher so this really, really touched my heart. And shout out to my mother, by the way, because my mother was one of those teachers that truly, truly cared about her students. Now, on June 3rd of 2022, Susan Baffour, Demetrius's great aunt, who is that creature on the screen who literally looks like she was auditioning for some type of upcoming slave movie. Like she looked like somebody's mammy, like she was getting ready to just whip out her boobs and start feeding some white children. <laughs> She looks like a mammy. I'm sorry, but she does. Like she's looking like, like what y'all want? To, what y'all kids want to eat this morning? Like she about to go in the kitchen and go whip up some pancakes at your mama looking ass. <laughs> Excuse me, pearl milling. <laughs> but she just looked like. Why do you look like that, ma'am? Like she literally looks like we gonna overcome face looking ass. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I had to do it. I'm sorry. That woman looks terrible. Anyway, I'm sorry. 
Her name is Susan Baffour, Demetrius's great aunt. And she called 911 to report that the boy was not breathing. Look, y'all stop laughing at my jokes. They're not funny. They're, that, that was not funny, y'all. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> they responded to their apartment in the 1900 block of Ulster Street around 8.20 a.m. Baffour told police that she spanked Demetrius the night before. I don't know why people are still spanking children. I think if you're spanking kids, I think you're stupid. Okay? Y'all need to get out of this Neanderthal thinking. They're thinking just because we did it in the 1900s and 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s that spanking kids is the right way to go. How about evolve? How about you use this rather than this? Right? Children are like sponges. They will absorb and regurgitate what you put into them. If you put love and education and really teach children with your mind, you don't have to be physical with kids. Just want to throw that out there. I'm going to keep saying that. She claimed that she spanked him the night before. Since she's been arrested and faces charges of first degree murder, y'all know what that is. That could stand for a life sentence, maybe worse. And child abuse in connection to his death. She's next due in court for arraignment on December the 9th, which is very close from now, which is about less than two weeks from now. For months, News 9 has been working to learn if something could have been done to prevent the death of this little boy. We found one person who tried whenever Demetrius would attend school. Schools are meant to be a safe haven, a refuge for children who are not safe at home. Reed Gibson aims to provide that safe space at Ashley Elementary, particularly in Classroom 209. She said, I love it. It's a great place. It's really a family, Gibson said. In her room, she teaches her second grade, her second graders to be terrific. Second graders that once included Demetrius Wilson, the baby that you guys saw on my screen just a second ago. Let me see if I can get him back up here real quick. Let me get Mammy off the screen. Right here, this baby, second grader. She said that he was the sweetest little boy and he had a huge smile on his face. That smile that you guys saw. Every day he would come in running through the, the little fence and he would say, Miss Gibson, hi. Gibson said with excitement. Gibson also taught Demetrius's big sister, Noelle White. I think there was a, well, you'll see a picture of her in a minute, who's now in the fourth grade. She's also an angel. So I'll let you guys hear her interview. She'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, let me skip some of this. Let me read this part. This is actually important. Children are unable to protect themselves physically and emotionally, even verbally, said Colorado Child Protective Ombudsman Stephanie Villa, Villa Fuerte. Fuerte. I can't say her last name. How many times have you guys heard me say our children cannot speak for themselves nor defend themselves against the tyranny of their caretakers? Those are literally my words, and I'm glad that more people recognize that. Villa Fuerte and her office are often challenged with investigating concerns regarding children. I'm, I, I want to try to skip to some of the more important parts. Here it is. DHS was involved in Demetrius's life from the start. In March of 2014, let me see if I can show y'all this paperwork. Give me a second. Let me get this up real quick. And if you guys are listening, do me a favor and please click that thumbs up and share this. If you guys would, that would be awesome. I need to put this on the big screen. I'm going to cover myself up. You might not be able to read it, but I want you guys to understand the gravity of this. They've been involved in his life from the start. In March of 2014, Demetrius was born with marijuana in his system. The hospital contacted Denver Human Services. Over the years, DHS investigated four other reports regarding Demetrius and his older sister, Noel. So you guys see the paperwork. You know that I'm not making this up. That includes a February of 2017 incident when DHS removed the children from their mother's home, meaning she was a bad mom, 
hashtag bad mom, and placed them in the custody of their great aunt, Susan Balfour. So that means she volunteered herself to take care of these children. And that makes this even more egregious. Balfour was cleared by human services for kinship placement after background checks were completed. However, legal custody belonged to DHS until Balfour was granted parental rights in October of 2017. So she became the legal guardian of, this, of these kids. Permanent placement for Demetrius and his sister, Noel, had to take place within a year of their removal from their home due to their ages. It was a decision Demetrius's family thought was the correct one. At first, it started out okay, according to his aunt, Candace White. I had him like every other weekend, said his dad, Anthony, uh, Anthony Wilson, and it just stopped. White noticed the changes too. So some of this I can actually skip because I want y'all to hear this from them because they're going to do an interview. I think I can skip most of this. That is a lot of information. They're going to show this in the video. So I want to go ahead and give you guys the fair usage so you can hear it directly from the, uh, the interview people. Here we go. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And if you guys would, if you're watching this video on Demetrius, do me a favor and click that thumbs up. We want to have one thumb up for everybody watching, even if you watch it on the, uh, on the replay. Please click that thumbs up, okay? So to make this a little bit shorter, I want to go ahead and let you guys listen to the actual videos. Here we go. It has been five months since, uh, five months today, as a matter of fact, since Denver police responded to the call of a child who was unresponsive, eight-year-old Demetrius Wilson. His great aunt, Susan Baffour, has told police that she spanked him the night before, but now she is facing charges Charges of first-degree murder and child abuse in connection with the death. For months, 9 News reporter Darius Johnson has partnered with 9 Wants to Know to try and learn what happened to Demetrius. We do want to warn you the details of this case are very difficult to hear, but it's important so this never happens to another child. Here's part one of an ongoing investigation in hopes of finding the gaps that led to his death. Caskets shouldn't be this small. We haven't had a child in our family get killed or be killed or even die. For this family, what is now a reality. It feels like a dream. It still does. What happened to eight-year-old Demetrius Wilson was a nightmare. The service is beautiful. He was in all white. I was in all white. His casket was white, you know. Just an innocent little boy. A tearful service for a little boy gone too soon as loved ones gather in disbelief. I can't believe that we're talking about Michi. We called him Michi Mouse. Candace White remembers her nephew. He was just so cute and he had a smile. Oh my God, worth a million dollars. Anthony Wilson remembers his son. I took him to the park. He was just full of smiles, wanted me to swing with him, <laughs> go down the slides. I'm too big, but I, I did it anyway. So, <laughs> so my son. My sister came to a point that she needed help with the children and just being a mom, you know, and things weren't going how she would have wanted them to go. Demetrius was just three years old when his mother was deemed unfit and his father was in jail. That's when family stepped in. The first person we both thought of was Susie because she doesn't have kids. She always took the kids. You know, we knew she would say yes. And just like we thought, she said yes. In 2017, their great aunt Susan Baffour decided to care for Demetrius and his older sister. This is how a lot of families do. Trust somebody with another family member, think everything is okay. They later learned it wasn't okay. Now Demetrius is dead and Susan Baffour is in jail charged with murder. At first, I thought she snapped. I blamed it on like COVID. They were in that small place. She has these two kids, like she just lost it. It wasn't the first time. 
For Baffour, it would be the final straw. And then it was kind of like, I'm about to show you what I mean. According to court documents obtained by Nine Wants to Know, Baffour told police she went to Home Depot to buy duct tape and a back scrubber to whoop him for discipline. I don't know if it was wooden, plastic. It was thick enough where it's something that wouldn't just easily break and it broke. Baffour told police she made Demetrius take his clothes off. She then taped his mouth, arms together behind him, and ankles together. Can we get a charge of sexual abuse? Do y'all hear this? Let me ask you something. This woman is old and, and disgusting looking. Let me see if I can get her back up. I want y'all to look at this woman. She don't really know this kid and probably don't. And she's proven that she don't give a crap about this kid. I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this again. Why does somebody who is not the custodial parent need to see a child naked? You don't think that she sexually abused that kid, especially with her looking like would nobody actually want her? She's probably been living alone, right? She she one of those types. Like 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 what man would wanna would wanna spend a lifetime next to a woman that looks like that? I'm sorry, but I'm just being real. She's a terrible looking woman. She did a terrible thing. Y'all get mad if you want to. That's the damn truth. Why can't you look at a situation and just tell what it really is? That is a bad looking woman. Look at that. Oh, we gonna overcome. Face looking ass. I get it for your massa. Face looking self. Come on, man. What you think she was asking this boy to get naked for? You don't think that she probably did something in a sexual manner to this little boy? Huh? An innocent child on top of that. If she beat, and I want y'all to think about this, for y'all say I'm going off the rails. This kid was a excellent, excellent child. If she could beat him to death, you don't think that she would sexually abuse him? Look at this again. This is proven in court documents. She told him to get undressed and she taped his mouth and arms together. And it broke. Baffour told police she made Demetrius take his clothes off. She then taped his mouth, arms together behind him and ankles together. She then struck him all together about 40 times all over his body. And she made my niece watch the entire time. And made the, ooh, and made his sister watch him with no clothes on. Come on, somebody talk to me, please. Y'all might get mad about the slave jokes, but don't that sound like slavery? Again, please tell me when I've said something that's not accurate, that's not factually accurate. Forty times. Doesn't that sound like to the point? And I want y'all to think about this. You might think, no, slavery wasn't the same thing. How was it any different when she beat the boy to death? Is that not what happened in slavery? Slaves got beat to death, did they not? You might not like the fact that I said what I said, but I think what I said is actually accurate. Guess what else they also did in slavery times? Sexual assault. Mm hmm. Yep. Just throwing it out there. Let's keep going. Might not like that I'm saying it, but I think it's the truth. And if she did not watch, she was going to be next. The next morning, Demetrius never made it to school. Around 8 a.m., Baffour called Denver police to report he was unresponsive. My sister called their mom. 
and said, my son is dead. She was hysterical. I didn't believe her. I didn't believe it till I called the jail and asked if she was booked. And he said, Susan Balfour was recently booked on first degree and I hung up. And that's when I knew it was true and called my sister back and told her it was true. According to his autopsy, Demetrius died of multiple blunt force injuries with abrasions and contusions covering 30 to 40% of his body. The autopsy also reveals multiple scars indicating a history of abuse. I was numb. Oh my God, I can't believe she would do something like this. Why? When I heard the details of what happened to my son, it crushed me even more. Like, that's the biological father. I see the tattoos on his neck. I don't know anything about this man. But I want y'all to think about this. Let's think about this for a moment. This man was allowed to have visitation with his son. I don't know about if that's his daughter or not, but I know that he was that based on what they said, he was allowed to have visitation. He did see his son. Why didn't they give him a chance at custody? So you went to the great aunt. Let alone the fact that mom lost custody. We could first put the blame on the biological mother and biological father. Y'all felt this, this boy. This is y'all fault. Y'all the one that brought this kid into this world with no solid plan, with no solid understanding, with no course of action. Y'all was enjoying each other sexually and made kids irresponsibly. Think about that. They skipped this fucker up. Sir, I don't know what's wrong with you What's wrong with your record or anything? I don't know nothing about you. But all I know is that you say you saw your son, so you're familiar, you're around, you act like you care. Why did they not automatically say, hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see. Mom is a shitty mom. She can't take care of the kids. Who should we call? Maybe we should call oh, uh, Ghostbusters? Maybe Ghostbusters can be a, a, a parent to this child? You mean to tell me the great aunt was more of a consideration than the biological father who brought the child into this world? For that reason alone, sir, if you're watching this video, I question you. What is it about your character? What is it about your background that made you not a suitable candidate? Did you not try? Did you not care? Did you not know? To get on here and be like, yeah, man, it, it hurts my heart that this happened, y'all. And, and, and my boy was a good boy. He smiled so much, y'all. And I'm going to frown my face up and I'm going to act like I'm upset, y'all. But you didn't get custody. Somebody in the chat is saying that he was in jail. Sounds like a personal problem. That sounds like a personal problem. You would also have to ask, why was he living a life as a father and end up in jail? What was it about your actions and your behaviors that led to that? Again, I'm putting the responsibility at his feet. See what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's still the biological mother and biological father's fault that you allowed this pedophile great aunt to be a parent rather than y'all. It was more important for you to do what you did instead of presenting yourself as a suitable caretaker to put yourself in a position to be a parent to take care of your own flesh and blood, your own DNA. Isn't that something? I'm not going to feel bad for him. Can we get a hashtag? I smell a GoFundMe coming. Uh-huh. I do. 
smells like a GoFundMe coming real soon. My whole demeanor just changed, man. Like, oh my God, I can't believe she did this to my son. Shock and disbelief that the decision to leave a child in the care of someone they trusted would lead to the loss of their innocent little boy. I still feel like we're going to go to court and Susan's going to say somebody came in here and did this to them. Our family trusted you with them. It's hard for me to truly believe this happened. Trust, that's the key takeaway from this story. This family trusted their great aunt to care for these children. This family trusted the Department of Human Services to ensure that these children were okay. The Department of Human Services trusted that Susan would be the right fit for kinship placement. Ultimately, they all learned that was not the case. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, look, I'm going to be real. I tend to get a little bit distracted while watching these stories, right, y'all? And I'm listening to these news videos. I tend to watch things and I tend to get I tend to get distracted by things, right, y'all? I tend to just watch stuff and it just it, it just you know it it just really just dist <laughs> Look, he is a good dude. This reporter is a good dude. Hashtag no fun for me. I like that. I like that. I'm going to try to be nice, y'all. I'm going to try to be nice, y'all, okay? Because this man went out there and worked his buns off, y'all. He worked his cute little buns off to go out there and present this story, right? I really do. I really think that this man went out there and did a great job because he went to that school and he did an interview, which I'm about to show you guys here in a minute, honey. <laughs> okay, let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop. Today we continue our coverage. <clears throat> this ongoing investigation hopes to find the gaps in the system that it's led just to the death jokes. of Demetrius it's Wilson. It's just jokes. Denver police found the eight-year-old unresponsive back in June. Now his great aunt is accused of beating him to death. For months, Darius Johnson has partnered with Nye Wants to Know to learn what happened to this sweet little boy. Now we've learned his teacher says she did what she could to intervene. And she says if DHS had done its job, Demetrius might be alive today. School can be a safe haven, a refuge for children who are not safe at home. I love it. It's a great place. At Ashley Elementary. It's really a family. Particularly room 209. Reed, are we in your classroom right now? We are in my classroom. This is where Reed Gibson's second graders are taught to be terrific. Second graders like Demetrius Wilson. He was the sweetest little boy. He had this huge smile on his face. Every day he would come running in and he would say, Miss Gibson, hi. Ms. Gibson also taught his big sister, Noelle White, who is now in the fourth grade. She's also an angel. They both are just such great kids, and I feel lucky to have been a teacher for them. This year, in room 209... That was the first thing I put up when I came in. Demetrius's smile and spirit remain. I think just looking at his face and seeing that smile and that grin, I mean, that's the smile that he had every day, all day. Even after his life was cut short. It's something you never want to see, and especially for a child who's eight years old who still had so much left to give and was just taken way too early. Children are unable to protect themselves, physically, emotionally, even verbally. Stephanie Villaforte is Colorado's Child Protection Ombudsman, often investigating concerns regarding children. They may not have the skills they need to say, I need help. So the idea is these professionals in their lives take over that responsibility for them. That's the responsibility of a mandatory reporter. Certain professions require people to report child abuse or neglect to the Department of Human Services. That includes teachers like Ms. Gibson. I don't even know that I could make account of how many I've done. A dozen, less than a dozen? More than a dozen. And how long have you been a teacher? This is my fifth year. DHS was involved in Demetrius's life from the start. 
In March 2014, he was born with marijuana in his system. The hospital contacted Denver Human Services. Over the years, they investigated four other reports regarding Demetrius and his older sister, Noel. That includes a February 2017 incident when they removed the children from their mother's home and placed them in the custody of their great aunt. Susan Baffour was cleared by Human Services for kinship placement. Legal custody belonged to DHS until the department gave Baffour parental rights in October 2017. At first it started out okay. A decision Demetrius' like family anyone. thought was the right one. I had him like every other weekend and then it just stopped. I couldn't hardly make a phone call. And that's what I was saying about the biological father. He said he had his child every other weekend. If the mom lost custody, why not go for full custody? Bruh, if there was ever a time a father was going to win custody of their children, it should be when the mom loses the kids. That's what I don't understand about this. I'm wondering what was it about his background or his behavior or his working situation that he couldn't take custody of his own child? I don't get that. That doesn't make any sense at all. To them without there being you know, an excuse. Yeah, I kind of wondered why he wasn't coming around or. If they were planning on coming over Saturday, it got canceled. I thought she just kept him away because I, you know, I went to a different church. COVID created more isolation from their family. Demetrius and his sister attended school online. As a teacher, people say, wow, you really have an impact on these kids. You hang out with them a lot. You're with that child for five days a week, eight hours a day. In October 2020, Ms. Gibson first became concerned for the kids' well-being. She had a cute little skirt and tights on, but she had ripped her tights in the bathroom like while she was pulling them up. She went home, Susan saw that they were ripped. She came back the next day and she said, I got grounded because my aunt said that I took scissors into the bathroom and cut my tights. That's when she kind of broke down and was like, I don't want to go home. I don't, I don't like it there. I want to stay here. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all know how some people don't meet, need to be in certain positions. And I'm not going to lie. I honestly believe Jay, he didn't want to. He was content with seeing his son on the weekend, like a lot of men. Now, I will tell you this, Peachy Tea Time, he, that's what he seems like to me, and I would have to agree with you. So, Dad, if you're out there listening, I'd have to concur. That's what it sounds like to me. It doesn't sound like you loved your children enough. This is what, what they call, what do they call it? Like a slam dunk, like an alley-oop. They just toss it up in the air and all you had to do was just, just finish it off. They put it right out there for you to get custody of your children. And let me tell y'all this. Most men who are on child support would jump at the opportunity, would chomp at the bit if you say, I will give you custody and I will take you off of child support, most men are going to say, hell yes, give me the kid. And he didn't do that for whatever reason. The reason why I say that some people don't need to be in certain positions wasn't about him. I'm going to say this about me personally. This is about me personally, because I thought I was going to follow in the footsteps of my mom and be a teacher. That's actually what I went to college for was uh, was early childhood education. So I was going to be a teacher. And I think that uh, with me being a, uh, a youth counselor, me loving kids the way that I do, I think that me being around kids, I think I did a real good job as far as being a mentor, being a leader, being a teacher. I think I did a, a, a pretty commendable job, but I'm going to tell y'all, if I was in her situation, I would not have handled this properly. I'm going to just tell y'all I wouldn't have. Can I explain what I mean? Can I explain what I mean? And I'm going to look into the camera when I say this. <laughs> when that little girl, his sister, if I were the teacher, would have come and told me 
that my great aunt, my aunt said, I took scissors into the bathroom and cut up my tights. So she blamed me and grounded me. I'm going to tell y'all, I seem like a nice person, but I know there are just certain things that I can't handle. And one thing that I cannot handle is I cannot handle people lying on children. I don't like liars, period. I don't lie and I don't like people to lie. I can't deal with lying properly. If you want to know the truth, don't like if your feelings are, are sensitive, don't ask me because I'm going to tell you the damn truth. My mouth tends to get me in trouble because I'm very honest to a fault. If I would have heard that, guess what I have would have done next? Me acting improperly, I wouldn't have called CPS making more than 12 fucking reports. I wouldn't have called the principal. I wouldn't have called one of my fellow teachers say, what you think I should do, y'all? I wouldn't have called down there to the police station and said, I think y'all need to go down here and go investigate this. Me personally, if I were in her shoes, I'm not saying you should behave this way. I'm just saying maybe I'm thankful that you have people like this that can behave properly because me, I would have shown up to great grandma slavery's house and gave her a piece of my motherfucking mind. There's a good chance that I probably would have threatened her and probably would have lost my job, maybe even been sued because I would have been employed by the state. I can't promise you I would have handled that properly. I don't like people who hurt, murder, abuse, and lie on children. I have a deep-seated Hate for people like that. Do y'all understand how deep that word hate is? You want to know why I despise people like that? Because I look at these children and they're like a quarter of your size, maybe even an eighth of your size. And you bully them. You punk them. You make them fear you. You don't make them respect you. You make them fear you. You understand what I'm saying? These children don't learn to respect you from being hit and spanked and physically disciplined. Please understand if you spank your kids, stop effing doing it. They don't learn to respect you. They learn to fear you. When you control people with fear, it goes horribly wrong. Because one of two things are going to happen. Either that person or animal that you're making fear you will lash out and lash back at you. Or you're going to overreact. This is why I call them bullies. Because you only did this because this little eight-year-old boy couldn't whoop your big old grown 82-year-old looking self. You was too big for him to fight back. You was too big for him to physically prevent you from doing what you did to him and stripping this boy naked. You understand what I'm saying? There is no child that is going to accept that and they understand that that's wrong. They're not going to just sit there and do that just because you told them to do it. You forced them to do it. Because that little boy thought that you were going to murder him. In which you did. It let that boy grow up and become 16 years old. Double his age, triple his size. Do you think that she still would have been able to do that to a 16 year old? We just watched a case where two 16 year old twins escaped bondage from their mother. She physically restrained them and they were strong enough that they were able to escape. That's why I call these people bullies. Because it's funny how you think it's okay to spank a two-year-old, a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, but you won't spank a 22-year-old, a 25-year-old. Why? They're still your child. 
You still want them to respect you. Why don't you spank somebody who's grown or big enough to defend themselves? Because they're not going to sit there and take it. We're not going to take it. I don't know why I thought about that song anymore. Because I DJ 80, so I thought about that song. That's my Tommy impression for the day. But they're not going to sit there and just take that. That's what a bully is. I couldn't be in her position because I'd be in and hurt one of them parents. I'd be in and hurt one of them caretakers. If nothing else, I definitely would have pulled up to the house and cussed her out. Smooth out. And that would have been the end of my teaching career. So let's listen to the rest of this story. And that's why I made the report. Ms. Gibson filed a report with DHS. I just felt like it needed to be put in writing, said to someone, so that they could investigate further. We found her report was screened out. DHS says it didn't fit the criteria to launch an investigation. The next red flag came nearly a year later. Susan had emailed asking if we could put him on remote learning, and we told her that that wasn't an option. Baffour's reasoning? punishment according to the school that wasn't right that she was trying to keep him out of school for two weeks in september 2021 the school attendance secretary called the denver public schools department of safety to conduct a welfare check at their home baffor never answered the door and dhs was never contacted. The issue with mandated reporting is it's really designed to serve as an alert system for the system to know, hey, we have a child who's in peril um, and somebody needs to go look at their home, check this out. When those things don't happen, um, we do run the risk that children are left in harm's way. The way the law currently stands, DHS is not required to follow up with the family once a caregiver is granted parental responsibility. The last time DHS made contact with Noel and Demetrius was in 2017. That's the last date that they have any record of Demetrius before his death on June 3rd of 2022. There is a five year gap from the moment Susan got him until the moment he died. I mean, you, I don't know how DHS works and I don't know what that process is, but you would think that there would be some follow up after they've been placed in her custody to make sure that everything is okay. And this is the part that sucks about the system sometimes because this teacher, this woman, I don't know if she's a mother or not, she did her job. What else was she supposed to do at that point? And I'm sure she feels helpless. That's her student. And I guarantee you, if you would have left her custody of this boy, she would have taken perfect care of him. She reported it and 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 reported it. She said more than a dozen times. That's ridiculous. That's a failure of the system. Even though we, like I said, I tried not to always point the finger at CPS and DPS and police. Because at the end of the day, it's still the biological mother, and biological father's fault for it getting to this point. So we always have to put onus back on them. But yes, this is absolutely a failure on the system. The system failed. I'm sure it leaves you speechless. Yeah. And heartbroken too. How do we get more youth to, to really be seen and heard by all the professionals that are designed to help them? Professionals like Ms. Gibson, who believes DHS needs to do a better job. I mean, there are some days to me where I'm like, is it even worth me reporting anymore? Because obviously I will, I'm a mandatory reporter. I'm not going to not, but like, it just makes you lose a lot of hope in the system when you have something like this happen. Losing hope in a system that is meant to protect children. I told you I have nearly 400 pages of documents. 400 pages, please, can y'all type 400 in the chat, please? And I need I need y'all to let me know that y'all heard him say that. Now, as much as I was pointing fun at this young man, and he is a young man, he's probably he's probably in his early twenties. He's a young dude. He's professional, and he actually did a lot of this research himself. 
and I respect that so much. Even though I I, I crack jokes because certain things are just funny to me. Four hundred pages to me equivocates to four hundred missed opportunities to save this child's life. Four hundred. Four hundred. That's 400 pages, not 400 words. If it was 400 words, that'd be too much. If it were 400 characters, that would be too much. 400 filled pages. Think about that for a moment. And thank y'all for typing that in the chat. This is starting from Demetrius's birth. They were not given to me easy and they were not easy to get from the from Denver Human Services. Some of those files were not provided to us until we went over their heads and went to the state. This is why I give him a ton of respect because they could have just stopped where they were at and they was just like, well, we didn't get any answers and we're going to stop there. And you know what? They kept going, they kept looking for answers, and they went and got their answers and they got their documents. And that's why I was telling you guys early on, I respect this media team for going above and beyond because that's that's real investigative reporting. And that's that's something that's very commendable. And those documents show that there is a massive gap where DHS never checked on Demetrius or his sister during the five years that they were in the care of Susan Baffour. So this aunt got custody. There's no requirement to follow back up. There is a requirement. Correct. So there is there is a requirement to follow up 30 and 60 days after. However, there is no statute under the state of Colorado that requires the Department of Human Services to check in or follow up once someone has established permanent parental rights. Mm -hmm. So initially they leave in February. They immediately go to Baffour. She's cleared of parental rights that October. They didn't have to go back and check on the kids at that point, and they didn't. So it's something that experts I've spoken with who say that's something that needs to be changed because because it could save kids from dangerous situations, especially when you don't have eyes on mm -hmm. them. So that wasn't even part of the uh, the rules or the law then. But uh, there there were plenty of red flags though. Besides that, there were red. Y'all know I talk about red flags and yellow flags a lot, and they had a lot of them here that they just flat out ignored. Flags. You had teachers who were calling fouling reports. You know this hasn't come out yet, but these kids missed more than sixty days of school in a school year. Any teacher looking at that is going to realize, OK, something is going on and that's where they're making the calls. That's where they're calling the Department of Public Safety for the district to get someone to go to the home and check on these kids. Um, now, moving to the next story, we're really going to focus on his school records, the gaps within attendance and also why the district policy didn't necessarily warrant an action from school leaders. Um, we know this school has definitely done more to try to prevent this from happening again, and we're trying to see if the district will talk about that and see if it's something they are willing to implement as well. That's reporting. Somebody in the chat said that. That's reporting. That's a great job. And like I said, I'll poke a little fun at the dude. But he speaks very clearly, very eloquently very direct, straight to the point, and didn't stop at no. He went and got the answers that they needed in order to find out really what's going on so they could report a full story, which was why I absolutely had to show y'all these two videos. And I just have to commend them. I could actually stop that video right there. I don't know who the dude is, but if that's the kind of the work that he's going to do, then they've actually landed a gym hiring that guy, man, because he's he does a really good job. You got some people that just want the check. But I think exposing these criminals, exposing this behavior, exposing these failures is exactly what we need, which is also why I believe that my channel exists, which is why I created it, because I said as long as. Is there is murder and abuse happening to these children as long as they don't have voices, then that's what I'm going to speak on. And I'm going to speak on it 
until I hope that this thing, I can wake up one day and there's nothing to report. Until then, we're going to continue to keep advocating for justice. That's why we're the AFC. You can be an AFC advocate in your home, in your city, in your state, in your neighborhood, in your schools. You see something, you say something, you report it and put the responsibility where it needs to fall and hold these people accountable. Okay. But thank you guys so much for listening to Demetrius Allen Wilson's story. And y'all need to pray for his sister also. She didn't lose her life. His sister didn't lose her life. But she watched her brother get murdered in front of her face. Demetrius Wilson, Young Prince. R.I.P. And y'all please keep his sister in your prayers. Because she's going to need every bit of it. As far as the father, if he want to come out and explain it or shoot me an email, let me know what's really going on. Then maybe we can get to the root and get to some resolution in these situations. Okay, but thank y'all for listening. Like, share, and subscribe. I believe this is what matters, and this needs to be at the forefront of everybody's channel, everybody's subscriptions. Thank you.